popular video games forum NeoGAF continues to be the big topic of the week as the website came back online days after sexual misconduct allegations against founder Tyler Malka, aka Evil Lore. For those who haven't been keeping up with the news, a few days ago, film director Ima Liup published a Facebook post alleging that during a road trip to New Orleans with Malka, after having some drinks at a hotel, when she felt sick and got in the shower for relief, she was surprised when Malka got in the shower fully naked behind her. When she told him that this wasn't okay, that she was sick, that she had a boyfriend, and that she didn't want this, Malka allegedly got out and slowly started resenting her, being mean to her, and ignoring her. She also expressed how she was reluctant to name the perpetrator because he was a semi-famous man who would have retaliated when she couldn't afford to defend herself. Finally, after being persuaded to stand up for herself, she said, fuck it, Google evil lore. Once word got out, NeoGAF users, moderators, and administrators left in droves, leaving the forum in a state of utter chaos. Those who remained proceeded to spam the forum with shit posts and threads protesting Malka's behavior. It didn't help Malka's case that he's had a past history of sexual misconduct and inappropriate behavior, like when he bragged on NeoGAF about grabbing a woman's ass on a trip to Spain to assert his dominance, banning any user who questioned the morality of this act along the way. Then there is the more recent incident from a few months ago back in June 2017, when a NeoGAF moderator going by the name of Christopher John Goldberg, aka Amarox, was arrested and charged for possession of child pornography. Malka promptly released a statement in which he claimed that no one at the moderation team knew his real name, but evidence surfaced that Malka knew Goldberg, as can be seen in this GoFundMe page organized by Goldberg that Malka donated $1,000 to. Then, when a journalist reached out to Malka to ask whether they'll begin vetting the mod team for heinous criminal behavior, Malka's response was to block the journalist on Twitter. All this information spread like wildfire, and the spike in NeoGAF's traffic eventually resulted in the website crashing before it was manually taken offline, citing a scheduled maintenance. NeoGAF and Malka both went completely dark for a few days until recently, when the website came back online with a sticky statement from Evil Lore himself. Here's how he responded to the allegations. Hi, an allegation of sexual misconduct has been made against me by an ex. It's not true, the individual making the accusation is incredible, the story doesn't reconcile logically with the facts, and there is plenty of evidence and witnesses to corroborate that. It'll be a process. All allegations of this nature are serious, of course. I first got word of it on Wednesday when a screenshot of a Facebook post was handed to Vote. I immediately talked with my mod team about the contents of the screenshot and clarified that it was baseless and explained some of the details concerning my former associations with her and tried to ensure any concerns from the mod team were addressed fully and transparently to everyone's satisfaction. On Thursday, I heard that she had deleted the accusation from Facebook and wasn't entirely sure how to proceed from there or how this would all play out in the public space at that point. Then, Friday morning, the screenshot made its way to NeoGAF and chaos ensued. I was in the process of writing a statement that entire day to formally address the allegation, but the community had erupted in a flash that morning. While the moderation team was trying to restore the peace, accusations and threats concerning the screenshot started shifting to them as well well by association with me, and I was asked by my team to do something to fix things and get the heat off all of them at least. I was beyond exhausted by that point though, stretched too thin in the time since the post had first appeared and seeing unprecedented events unfold on NeoGAF. I was slow and weak, I failed to handle it quickly enough and let the team down. Before I could finish a statement and get it out there, understandably some mods hit their emotional limit, expressed concerns about the community coming after them, and decided to leave. A few people resigned, and many more quickly followed for similar reasons, citing stress and harassment. The site started breaking under load spikes, leading up to the first resignations too, and then flatlined altogether. So issuing a statement at that time on NeoGAF itself became impossible for the time being, and my attention shifted toward the moderation team's future.
Since that whole mess, lasting from Friday morning through Saturday, before we formally went offline for maintenance and repair and restructure, we have just been trying to figure out the best course of action for NeoGAF going forward. And as stories began being published by various outlets, I issued some comments to the press, since everything coming out was proving to be sensationalized, opportunist, and unprofessional. We've all become increasingly stressed and weary this year in ways even I'm not accustomed to by now, and discussions on heated news, political issues, and social issues on the off-topic side of the site have become areas no one has wanted to moderate in the open for fear of backlash or just general exposure to the inevitable toxicity. I've gone in there myself to take the heat, since it's very much my responsibility to do so before anyone else's, but there has been little headway, mostly just more anger and resentment and a lot of bans. I don't think this necessarily reflects on our community, more so the tone of the entire internet this year with regards to heated issues. That's all going to inform the way forward for NeoGAF as we refocus on what the main goals are supposed to be for the site. The mod team will talk about more specifics on what that will entail below. One last thing, the NeoGAF mod team is here for this community, all of you. You have no obligations to respect me or believe anything I say about my personal life one way or another, but if you're going to be here and participate on NeoGAF, respect the mod team by following the rules and behaving. The team is diminished at the moment and the folks who stuck around care very much about this community and its future. Be considerate of them, that's non-negotiable. Thanks. Following up on Malka's statement, one of the mods had this to say, The future of NeoGAF will be a return to what many of us have come here for, a place where we can gather together and enjoy our shared hobby of video games. For a short time, off-topic discussion and off-topic community will be closed so that we can rediscover that. We'll be starting with a clean slate when they come back. However, the focus will be on the many other hobbies we may have, like TV, movies, anime, writing, music, etc. Political and social discourse will not be allowed in the new off-topic. Those types of discussions greatly added to the harsh and unwelcoming atmosphere of off-topic, which pushed many users away. For those worried, OT has not been deleted, and important threads will be archived for recovery once it's open again. Moderation will also see changes. Over the years, moderators changed from simply people who made sure discussions stay civil into personalities. It's because of that many were targeted for harassment and other things. This shouldn't be happening to them. We have taken action to prevent these people by making moderation anonymous. There will be no more red names that single them out, nor will there be a list of who is one. One last batch of statements I'd like to present comes from website Waypoint. When asked about the allegations, Malka responded by stating that Leop is a quote, deeply disturbed, malicious individual. He then added, it's been a perfect storm of misanthropy and opportunism, describing the accusation as totally ridiculous and baseless. As for the incident that Leup described and alleged, he didn't outright deny that it happened, but rather said it was totally harmonious and consensual. Leup, however, retorted with, I pretty clearly remember closing the door. Maybe not closing it all the way, but closing it enough so that I was protected. I wasn't getting naked in front of him and then going, oh, I'm going to puke. You want to come in the shower with me? That's fucking gross. And then called Malka's insistence that such an advance was consensual, delusional. All right, so as far as whether the sexual misconduct allegations are true or not goes, that's not for me to say. All I can do from my end in that regard is hope that a proper investigation is carried out and that the matter is resolved justly. What I do want to talk about is NeoGAF's downfall and what the future holds for the once popular games forum. Regardless of whether the sexual misconduct allegations are true or not, one thing that most people agree upon is that Tyler Malka handled the situation in the worst way possible. Instead of being open and empathetic, Malka instead resorted to censoring anyone speaking out about the issue. He's been rampantly banning users, deleting threads, and essentially shutting down any expression of concern and criticism, even those who approach the situation with tact and civility. As you saw in the statement, Malka even resorted to prohibiting political and social discourse in the off-topic section once it goes back online. Ever since the allegations, it's just been an amalgamation of censorship and a complete lack of transparency, which was not what the community needed. There's this really great thread on the matter that I want to read to you guys, 
that eloquently explains the NeoGAF community's widespread sentiments. It's pretty long, so brace yourself, but it should give you a pretty good idea on why members were so quick to leave in droves. It actually has less to do with the sexual misconduct allegations and more to do with Malka's attitude and his dictatorial leadership approach. Here's what the user said. Evil Lore's mistake isn't that he was accused of the acts in question or even that he denies them. To be fair, we don't know what happened and there's a 50-50 chance he's telling the truth. Either way, it's an ugly thing to accuse someone of and it's an even uglier thing to have happened if it did in fact happen. However, this thread is not about that. This thread is assuming that Evil Lore is innocent as far as the sexual assault is concerned. And I'm not saying that's what I personally believe, it's not. I'm just assuming that for the sake of argument within this post. Rather, his mistake was that he did not communicate with the NeoGAF community properly, left his mods out to dry without releasing a statement for days, and had too much of a stranglehold on moderating the forum and determining its discourse over the years, which led to a lot of resentment, especially since he profited so much from it. Whenever you have one person in a position of power that relies upon the contributions of many for him to maintain that power, you have the potential for a revolt the moment that any appearance of impropriety emerges about that one person. NeoGAF was a sole proprietorship as far as I know, but Evil Lore was clearly not the reason why this place was so great. Instead, it was the posters like you and me who created tons of great official threads, shared breaking news, created crazy gifts, and had each other's backs that made NeoGAF what it is. In other words, even though its content was generated democratically, its leader acted like a dictator. No one else could do anything that contradicted him. He acted above criticism and banned those who laid into him hard within these forums. However, as I insinuated before, this community is about us, not about him. Ultimately, we are the reason why it was so great. We generated the content in massive numbers and kept things moving and fun. And because this forum is great because of us and not him, when Evil Lore was accused of the sexual assault in question, he had a duty to take the spotlight off himself, either by stepping down, apologizing, if he is in fact guilty of doing this thing, or by donating funds generated by NeoGAF traffic to a worthy cause related to sexual assault victims. When he did not do any of these things, he made us all look bad by association and tarnished what we love about this place. He is not an adequate spokesperson of our values. His response instead was basically, that bitch was crazy, no more OT, my bad regarding the mods, talk about games only, carry on or I'll ban you if you accuse me of shit. And quite frankly, that is not an adequate response, nor was it timely, and if he bans me as a result of this civil explanation as to what I deem his mistakes were, well then it only proves my point that he thinks the forum is about him and that he is above criticism. And make no mistake, he is not. No one is. In fact, locking or closing all the threads on Friday and Saturday that consisted of people wanting answers was probably the biggest mistake in the history of NeoGAF. If he allowed the criticisms to flow and responded humbly, then this community would still be strong. In other words, the cover-up on this forum was far worse than the underlying sexual accusations. Today, everyone who posts here about games is choosing to bury their head in the sand and ignore the elephant in the room. The community could have come out stronger in the end if we did not talk about games for a few days and instead made the focus about investigating these actions and airing our grievances about them. Rather than dictating how we move forward in a sticky, he should have asked us in a thread, how can we move forward? forward. In other words, he should have deferred to us as to the best way to handle it because again, who is this community about? Yup, us. Yet he did not do that. He assumed the same role that he always has and made a decision about our community without input from the community. He is still projecting the same proud dictator image today that he always has. He is not humble even in a moment when he should be and likely is feeling incredible shame. And when someone is that out of touch, I completely understand why so many people do not want to contribute to his wealth. I also understand why so many people want to very publicly insult him and ask for bans in protest. Furthermore, by silencing most of the discussion about the underlying accusations and talking about games, Evil Lore and most of the gamers here miss the point and don't understand what made the forums great for so many people. NeoGAF no longer feels like a place of truly honest discourse. It's an inauthentic brand 
brand going forward and will never be the same until the gaming discussion falls by the wayside for a bit so that the seriousness of the allegations can be acknowledged by the entire GAF community. So Evil Lore should not have gotten rid of Off Topic and only kept gaming, as he did yesterday. Instead, he should have done the opposite, focus on the Off Topic section and create a discussion thread on how we can move forward as a community. He should have participated in the discussion humbly and allowed people to criticize him instead of what he did via the sticky at the top of the thread list. Yes, he can deny accusations, but he should have not denied accusations and closed off discussions. That was a tremendous error. And saying, I was slow and weak, I failed to handle it quickly enough and let the team down, is not a worthy apology and will never satisfy the major contributors to this community. That slowness and weakness is why he does not deserve to be a spokesperson for this forum any longer, and also why I will not be posting here in the future. But keep on solely talking about video games, guys, that's not awkward or anything. And Evil Lore, if you ban me today, you're beyond help, dude, and you're fighting a battle you cannot win. Take a moment to realize what NeoGAF was for so many of us, and then reread your official statement and ask yourself, did I do enough? Is this acceptable? Because I I think you know deep down in your heart what the answer is. And remember, all this assumes the allegations are false. I could say more of what I really think Evil Lore really is, but I decided to keep it civil on what he clearly deems to be his own turf. Yeah, I can't help but agree with most of what this NeoGAF user has to say. Abridged version of these sentiments can be read across various posts after NeoGAF came back online, like this one which says, yeah, this is unacceptable, the getting rid of off-topic and later restricting what can be discussed is a poor response. The spirit of what made Gaff worth visiting is dead here. And like this one here, directed at Evil Lore, stating, Your solution to people being upset about the sexual assault accusations against you is to shut down the entire side of the site that discuss these types of issues and ban political social threads? You are a coward. Even ex-NeoGAF moderators have spoken up about these issues anonymously, one of who shared their experience with website Waypoint. Here's an excerpt from their article worth quoting. It remains strange that Malka's first public comments on the allegations came to a reporter rather than the community itself. More than 48 hours after questions were raised, Malka still hasn't said a word on social media. A pattern begins to emerge. Malka was slow and awkward to respond to the revelation that one of its own moderators, an outspoken progressive, was a pedophile. And Malka was slow and awkward to respond to allegations made about his own conduct. This is in character with with what moderators I spoke to described as Malka's hands-off style of management when it came to on-site policy, except for in cases where it suited him. There was historically a lot of dissatisfaction with cases where he overrided us, made policy on a whim, or did things that we had to answer for, said one moderator. And you know what the most damning thing about all this is? Turns out that shortly after this was posted, NeoGAF proceeded to delete this thread. The only reason I even managed to catch it was because Kotaku editor Jason Schreyer pointed this out in a tweet and attached screen grabs of the deleted thread for all to see. I think we can agree that the thread's poster approached the topic in a very sensible, reasonable, and civilized manner, and yet it was censored for the very simple fact that it spoke out against evil lore and bruised his ego or whatever. It's the kind of thing that dictators do. Deleting the thread only went to show that everything this NeoGAF user has to say about Malka is pretty much spot on. And this pattern of dictatorial behavior and his inability to take criticism or evaluate his own actions is the main reason why users, moderators, and administrators got fed up and left. The fact of the matter is that this had been going on for a long time, and this had been an open secret for a while now, but after the recent allegations came, and after the way Malka handled that situation with a disregard for his community's thoughts, opinions, feelings, and criticisms, that became the last straw. And I get that, I mean, how ridiculous is it that he's allowed to make inappropriate posts about how he grabbed a woman's ass to assert his dominance, but when approached with sensible critique about issues that are relevant to the community, that somehow crosses the line. So yeah, it's Malka's past and present history of egocentric hypocrisy and misconduct that in the end killed NeoGAF, not the allegations by themselves, 
that's important to understand. It was his hammering down of open discourse and his disregard for respecting the community that built NeoGAF into what it was that resulted in the mass exodus. The community basically said, enough is enough. To further drive this point forward, I'd like to show you a compilation of screen grabs posted by Twitter user Hassan in response to Jason Schreier's tweet about the deleted thread. Here's what that looks like, and it begins by showing an image of a portion of NeoGAF's rules and etiquette, which reads, be polite, please, in general, when posting in threads, don't be a dick, be respectful of other fellow members, and learn to argue against the points in a discussion without making it personal or insulting the other party. Present your points well, and others will respect your opinion more. The screen grabs then show one of the numerous inappropriate posts that Evil Lore made on NeoGAF, which reads, sexual objectification is great, harassment is not. From there, when NeoGAF user Tanumi raised moral questions about the statement, Evil Lord childishly scoffed and laughed at Tanumi's retort before banning them for the following reason. I'm sure there are lots of brony websites to clop on, that you're actually attempting to discuss social concerns relating to human sexuality is beyond hilarious. It's worth noting that Tanumi had a brony avatar before they were banned, and that's what Evil Lore is making fun of. Evil Lore concluded with, Can we rename internet feminism to something like Basement Virgin First Semester Women's Issues Major Sex Fearing Bubble Person Prudism? That has more of a ring to it. The screen grabs finally concluded with a message stating, Agree with Evil Lore's opinions or not. However, there is no way anyone should find this type of behavior acceptable, especially on a forum that prides itself on being respectful of fellow members and arguing against the points in a discussion without making it personal or insulting the other party. I would say that this collection of screen grabs right here perfectly exemplifies the kind of man that Tyler Malka is, the kind of leader that the NeoGAF community had to deal with for so many years who they have been so fed up by that they finally resorted to mass exodus over other alternatives. To put it simply, regardless of whether the allegations against Malka are true or not, the man is a proven asshole, and no one sensible wants to be a part of a community that's run by a dictatorial, egocentric, selfish, immodest, apathetic asshole. And I think that's really the simplest way to explain NeoGAF's downfall. The bubble of this man's inflated ego finally burst, and NeoGAF burst along with it. So yeah, I hope this sheds a bit more light on the mentality behind the mass exodus. It's not just about a Facebook post alleging sexual misconduct. It's also about a long history of assholery from the man in charge. And that Facebook post and the way that was handled acted as the tipping point before NeoGAF imploded. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this video insightful. Respectfully share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. All contributions will go towards helping us remain 100% independent. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.